What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to Everything Vive. I am here. My name is Zane. I'm with Ronnie. Ronnie, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. I'm I'm reinvigorated after you know having a couple weeks back from from GDC, and it's great talking to you actually on the podcast. I know we haven't done a we haven't done an episode like this in a while, so I'm excited to, yeah, to been... dive back in because I lived <laughs> vicariously through you with uh, with your travels through GDC or in GDC, and so. Um, but before we jump into that, for all of the listeners, thank you guys so much for tuning in. I know our, our schedule has been a little bit erratic, but moving forward, Ronnie and I have committed to, to putting up an episode every Tuesday, whether that's an interview, whether that's game reviews or game talk uh, or just news or whatever the case is. So uh, please hold us to that. We're going to hold ourselves to it. And we're excited to just just talk VR because I think, Ronnie, you came across some really awesome and incredible stuff while you were at GDC. And I, like, I mean, it's incredible to me. And I was just hearing about it secondhand from you. But yeah. uh, I, I figured let's, this, this episode is going to be GDC recap. recap. So I, I think we, we spoke a little bit briefly before that. Just to keep it kind of organized, why don't you give us like the top three things or top three experiences yeah. or top three just memories from, from GDC and, uh, that you, you'd like to share? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I, like you were saying, I kind of, you know, tried to, tried to think back to, to what I was doing at the conference and what my, my three biggest takeaways were. And, and initially I was thinking, Oh, should I do three games? Should I do three experiences or companies that I thought, uh, that I thought were doing really cool stuff. Um, but then, you know, I, I kind of took it a little bit more back. And, and so the, the three points I'm going to, I'm going to kind of talk about, are as follows. These are kind of my, my three takeaways from a week just in the midst of, of everything that's going on in VR and games in general. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. So, so my first, my first takeaway is that developers are focusing on VR in the right ways. And, you know, to qualify that statement, I guess I was just really impressed with the developers that I had talked to and gotten a chance to meet there, as well as a lot of the sessions that were VR specific that I had a chance of listening to, I, I was impressed with how much everyone's taking a VR, a VR centric look at what they're doing. So, you know, my, one of the, my biggest concerns is always having too many people out there try to shoehorn or shovel in ideas or concepts from, from non VR games or from, from non VR type experiences into the medium, because, you know, as we've kind of learned, through trying all of the various, you know, experiences that we've tried, when a when a developer is really focused on making something from the ground up for VR specifically, that those types of experiences are just head and shoulders about above, you know, those other kind of quicker, more shoehorned attempts. And and yeah, this this GDC, I can definitely say that that developers are very aware of the specifics that VR, uh, you know require and i there was just so much so much interesting talk and innovative ways of looking at solving problems in vr that i think uh just gave me a lot of hope for for where the industry is moving so so that's that's kind of my first big takeaway um and and i can and i'll probably get into some of some of the more details on some examples of that that i saw at the show um in in kind of my later points so then point two my second big takeaway from from GDC, you know, a couple weeks ago, was that uh, plat the VR platforms themselves don't seem to be the focus with developers. The overall experience is what matters, and the reason I say that, and the reason why this is a, a good takeaway in my opinion, is that I didn't really see a whole lot of like platform uh, specific type of uh, of content from from various developers. Like obviously, I saw some amazing things being shown off by, by HTC in conjunction with valve that, you know, blew away. Like I, I still left this, this conference hands down, believing that the Vive is head and shoulders above any other type of VR platform out there, especially when it comes to just, just the raw capability of the tracking systems. So that, yeah. that hasn't changed okay. like for me, for me, I still feel like Vive is my platform, right? Um, regardless of, of our podcast and all of that, just, <laughs> Like well, that was actually you. You own both, so I mean, yeah, yeah, and, and no, and, but yeah, yeah, no. That was the. I mean, I got to try out some of some more commercial type VR experiences that were using mm -hmm. tracking systems different than both, you know, different than consumer level VR, you know, tracking systems, for example. And I was thinking, oh, this is going to be 
the next level, blah, blah, blah. And no, like everything I tried, there was no, nothing I, I tried that compared to, to, to what base stations offer as far as tracking, uh, you know, tracking viability and just the, just, just the flexibility you have when you're playing with the vibe, being able to kind of do whatever you want, rotate, run around, whatever you want to do, you know, within the limits of that wire and, and not being concerned that the tracking is going to, going to wig out or anything like vibe is still, still up there. But the reason that my number two, you know, point is that the the platforms aren't the focus of the developers. Is that I really do think that that you know most of the the developers out there that are working on 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 high end VR experiences, you know, they're flexible with with whether you own a Vive or a Rift or even you know some of these mixed reality Microsoft headsets that are now um, you know n- now kind of part of the playing field. I mean, all of you know, I, mixed reality is the mixed reality headsets are still a little bit behind as far as their 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 compatibility with with Steam VR titles. But uh, you know, a lot of folks were really optimistic about how good those plugins work to allow the Microsoft headsets to work in Steam VR. And and so so really, I mean, if you're interested in VR titles, uh, you know, whether you have the space to really take advantage of the Vive or you want to get something you know, that, that doesn't, doesn't have as good tracking fidelity, but has more flexibility like a Rift or a mixed reality headset. Um, you're going to be able to, to, to play most of the stuff out there. And, and, and I saw developers that, you know, primarily, you know, focus on, on the VR, I mean, on the vibe, for example, for their games, you know, when it came to flexibility and wanting to just throw something up real quick for someone to demo, they, they throw up a Rift because those sensors, you just, plop down on a desk and you're ready to go. Right. So like, I, so I, I just noticed, I noticed that, that a lot of the developers seem to be kind of, you know, just fluid from, from platform to platform, which is just great for, for all of us that are interested in, in the medium, because that means whatever headset you can afford, whatever headset your space allows for, you know, that's what you should be going for. And really at this point, I think all of these players, whether they be Oculus HTC, et cetera, they should all just be, you know, focused on trying to get as many people interested in VR as possible. And, and it, and it looks like that's what, what everybody's doing. So, so that was an awesome sign. Um, and then my final big takeaway, uh, from GDC was that the next year to a year, year and a half or so is going to be amazing for people that are currently like high end VR owners. I mean, just the, the number of titles I saw at GDC that just blew me away was like, I, I wasn't expecting it to be honest. I mean, we're talking, and, and I think the big reason for that, when I, when I kind of sat back and thought about it was a lot of the, com- so, so for, for listeners out there that have owned a Vive or, or even a Rift for, you know, the past two, three years now, um, you know, a lot of, a lot of you guys tried some experiences early on that just kind of blew you away. And then after that, you really haven't heard much from the developers of those titles. Everything just I mean, became some, like a derivative of the other thing, right? Yeah, yeah, a derivative of the other thing, or just in general, you know, like, it, man, like su- such and such title, you know, was amazing. I can't wait to see their next project. And yeah, some of them, like Servios, for example, has been really prolific and had multiple amazing projects like Raw Data and, and Sprint Vector. But like a lot of the teams out there, you kind of, you know, they, they, they delivered their one or two titles and it's been kind of a while before they kind of released a massive or like a larger scale project can, that, that you were kind of hoping for when you tried it out initially. Well, a lot of those companies have been working very, very hard over these past months and they were showing off games, uh, you know, at GDC that, you know, it's kind of the next stage, I think, in, in, in these, these deeper VR experiences that are going to be released in the coming several months to a year. So, I mean, I mean, titles like, you know, budget cuts is finally going to be coming out. The, oh, the so demo that everybody, that one, man. yeah, yeah. Like, and, and they have not been sitting on their laurels. They have been working really hard on that game and it really shows. I mean, a lot of what they were showing off in, in the beta build that, you know, to, to people at, at GDC, I mean, was different than what I was expecting and, and just as cool and something that I've, I've missed in other titles. I mean, the, really being able to take take advantage of room scale, you know, as budget cuts allows you to do crawling and, and trying to figure out like, I, like, despite the fact that I've had my, my vibe for so many months, 
when I tried the the beta and realized, oh yeah, I have to do some of this crawling around and like it was a very refreshing feeling and something that I haven't felt for months, despite the fact that you know that was a game that came out, you know, uh, the demo came out right when when the platforms were launched. So it's almost so like, two years you, ago at this point, if you think about it. Yeah, right. Exactly. Or maybe so, even though, yeah, two years. Yeah, yeah, at least. So, so that's why. So, so that's super exciting. You know, games like like Vacation Simulator. I mean, it's it, you know those the, the the people over at Alchemy Labs. You know, they've released a couple of titles since they they released Job Simulator. They had the Rick and Morty uh, VR game that came out after that. But with Vacation Simulator, I, I I had a chance to check that out, and just the raw scope of what they're trying to accomplish in this game is just so much further than anything they attempted in those previous games. It's it's kind of mind blowing. I mean, there they, there's there's really like just a much bigger like. The original job simulator was fun because you did kind of get to mess around within each experience and kind of do whatever you wanted to some extent, but it was still a fairly guided experience. Well, with my brief time with Vacation Simulator, I mean, you still have some of that hand-holding as far as, you know, specific tasks and, and activities that you're able to do, but they're in, in environments that let you kind of play around and explore to a much larger degree. Like, imagine in the original job simulator, if when you were in the office, you were able to move around from from you know uh, from 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 each place in the office, go behind different cubicles and see what each of the each of the different uh, you yeah. know employees at the office was up to. Like those are the kind of things you're going to be able to do in Vacation Simulator. You're able to move around. You're able like like not only do you have the little tasks for each major location, but then you kind of have meta games over that that let you kind of experience, you know, experiment more with the environment than, than any kind of single location. So like all that stuff was super, super cool. Um, again, I don't want to mention the Serbios people too much, but like what they were showing off with, with both Creed and Electronauts were, were both amazing experiences. They were, they were such polished experiences, but at the same time, they, they each tried to tackle a unique problem in VR that the developers are trying to set out for Creed. That's, that's melee combat. And for Electronauts, that's accessible music creation in VR. And, you know, some of the, the types of things that they're doing in those games are just on another level compared to, you know, similar kind of titles that are out there. And, and Beat Savers is another game that I got a chance to try out. And, I mean, for anyone out there that, you know, was a, that, that, that likes music games, was really into, and not audio surf, I'm trying to think, what was the... <laughs> uh, I'm trying to think of the, the name Shield? of yeah Audio Shield. There you okay, go. Yeah. Audio Surf was there with their prior non VR work, but with Audio Shield, that's a game I love, right? And that's like a game since the Vive came out that my wife goes back to time and time again as a game that she finds a blast, even though she's not into these like crazy, you know, locomotion based teleporting type, you know, shooter games. Yeah, she yeah. she loves those kind of experiences, and and Beat Saber is basically like a passion project by someone who loved what was being done in audio shield, but wanted to take it to the next step. And, and really you see, you see all these kind of projects coming out and they're all, you know, as good, if not better than the initial games and demos that we're still using to show off, you know, VR to, 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 to new people that have never tried it out. So it's just, yeah, I, I left this, I left this conference just super, super, super excited about where the medium's heading and, and whereas, like, if you would have asked me several months ago, like, you know, it, it seemed like like software was kind of slowing down a little bit. There's always, you know, like small games here and there that you'll see pop up on Steam, of course. But like, as far as it, as far as like new and exciting things that I was really interested in, kind of checking out, they were starting to slow down a little bit. And I, I cannot stress enough that after being at GDC, like, you see, there's just so much cool stuff that's right around the corner that that I just can't wait to be able to to play some of these games when they when they're finally accessible. Yeah, man. I mean, you're so like no joke, your your enthusiasm and just excitement in like the calls that we'd have every day or every other day. Um I, I mean that just that just got me excited. It made me feel bad that I hadn't uh I wasn't there with you and exploring some of the stuff just because it's it excites me too. I mean from from the moment you showed me the Vive, like my mind has just been completely blown and excited about where this tech is heading. And and I agree with yep. what you said in terms of like, 
I, not that there was necessarily a lull, but you know, like I, towards like the second half of last year, you know, uh, there were games coming out, but I wouldn't say there was anything until like Fallout Four really dropped, where people were yep. like really excited for something. But um, you know, Servios has just been on point with the the stuff that they've been been putting out, and actually, so we we should do a little PSA for them as well. There's a new uh, a new level out called Outer Vegas in their um, in their game Sprint Vector, which I know. Uh, they had spoken to you a little bit about, right? Yep, yep, yep. So, so they're, so. yeah. It's I, I think it's it's sponsored by Intel. That's kind of like an interesting thing. I noticed that Intel's been sponsoring a lot of stuff in VR, and and that's awesome too. Like it's 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 super cool that that people are really taking VR seriously, and and that's one of again one of the things that I noticed at GDC was just there's such an excitement in this industry right now, and 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 I think it's only the beginning. Like I, you know. People, we saw a lot of boom as far as investments and that kind of stuff. You know, a year, year and a half ago, and I and I think a lot of those projects are going to be starting to come to fruition. And a lot, you see a lot of hardware. To, we'll talk about you know some of the the new hardware coming up. I'm sure pretty soon here. But with with all these new announcements and all this these new these new software titles coming out, like I think the sky's the limit in terms of in terms of where it can all go. And whether there have been missteps or not, like I, it, seeing what where where all this stuff is headed, it again made just made me realize that you know this is this is going to be big, be huge. Whether it's now, whether it's in a couple of years from now, and 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 for all of us early adopters that are kind of on the ride right now, it's you know great times are ahead. I think so. Yeah. I'm, well, I mean the the fact that like. Year after year so far, it seems like new content is coming out that is just pushing the medium forward, pushing just this whole this whole movement, this whole technology forward. Uh, I mean, we're, we're two years removed from like the official launch of the Vive, right? I, I believe that came yep. out in April 2016. And, yeah, it's um, crazy. I, for some reason, it feels like it's been even longer than that. Me, <laughs> but, but yeah. Yeah, like but, I, yeah it's, it, I mean, it's just crazy to see like, what's out there, what's been done. And, 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 you know, some people will probably look at this and be like, ah, it's still moving kind of slow for tech. And, and I get that, but at the same time, like, you know, this, this stuff is, we're still at the, like the very beginning of the bell curve, at least in my opinion of like when this stuff is really going to hit mainstream and kind of become sure. exponentially bigger in, uh, in terms of like impact in, into social life and all that. Um, well, and there's still like on that point, there's still people out there that, like haven't even gotten a chance to try. Something oh my god! Like yeah, vibe. I know. <laughs> like, like, like the reason I bring that up is because, mm. like, I actually had somebody that came over to try out the vibe for the first time uh, over the weekend, and like I, I always kind of take for granted, like, what you know. Oh, if you haven't tried some of this stuff by this point, like, maybe you're interested, maybe you're not, whatever. But, but, you know, we're so used to it at this point, we forget that there are people. It's not like there are still people out there that would be fully willing to put down the money to to get a computer, get a Vive, get everything set up if they had a chance to try it, and they just never have, right? Like that's still where we're at in this medium that it's not accessible enough for people to try to even know if they're interested yet or not. Yeah. So, so I I showed someone this weekend, like he'd been he'd been kind of interested in it and he had wanted to check it out. He had recently gotten a little bit more interested, so I was like, yeah, of course, like you know, come by, try it, check it out. And a couple of days went by and I'm getting texts from him kind of reminiscent to, to when you and I talked, that was like, man, <laughs> like, like, like I, like I, I got an article, uh, forwarded to me in a text message that was talking about the Vive Pro and I said, Hey, is this, is this like kind of like the one you had? And I kind of, you know, quickly kind of explained like, Oh yeah, it's, it's a higher resolution version of the headset, but it's yeah, it's the same thing. Blah blah blah. It's a you know, newer it's like, version. It's not. Yeah, it's not two point but it's like uh, somebody said remastered, and I think that's the best. Sure. Uh, and 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 literally, he's like, hey, let's let's get to get like he's basically ready to ready to try to get get something ordered and, <laughs> and get into get into VR. He said he's been bit by the VR bug. I'm so, telling you, man, that that bug bites and it it's it just sticks onto you. Like that was the same what, so, same thing that happened to me. Remember, I was like, "Hey, Ronnie, you want to yeah. help me build my computer?" Like a week later, exactly. That's how it starts, right? So, like, so I'm just saying, like, there's still people like that right now that that if they had a chance to try real VR, 
that's the reaction they would get from it. That mm. ba- like even even talking about the the stuff that that exists now, right? Like we're not talking like he didn't try out some of these games that I played at at GDC. He tried the original stuff, and I and, know. And, yeah. And and two years later, he's like, you know, he's trying it for the first time, and it's a mind blowing experience. So just imagine, like, like I, there's just still so much potential in this industry, and 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 I mean, a lot of those challenges of of getting this stuff to be more mainstream is, you know, yeah. getting the form yeah. factor right, getting the marketing right, getting all these things. But like, but I mean, if the the underlying tech, even in this early stage, is that is it's still that in, that impressive and that engaging. Like, I mean. Like, you know, hopefully we'll get closer and closer to where everybody that would be interested is having a chance to try it. And and then maybe maybe we'll see those numbers shoot up like we're all hoping. Yeah, I mean, it's to me, it's only a matter of time. And uh, just to just to reference uh, something in pop culture, which I think is actually really important. But um, I got to see Ready Player One over the weekend. And we're, we're going to talk about that after you hopefully get a chance to see it this week. But, yeah, yeah. And, you know, a lot of the talk mm-hmm. when that came out was like how is this going to impact people's perception of VR? And I'm talking about like the masses, right? Like this was something that was released widely in theaters. It had Steven Spielberg directing it. So people went just for like the, the nostalgia factor of it the, and like the star power of it. Right. Or well, not, I mean, in terms of like the, the director and, and just how it was marketed being a major studio film and all that. But mm-hmm. you know, you know I, I was watching it through a different lens than I'm sure 99% of other people uh, because I own a VR headset and I'm very much invested in this world. And so to see, you know, what the potential for VR could look like in 30 years, um, to me, that was awesome, right? For someone else, they might actually look at it and be, or they might look at it and say like, oh, that's like science fiction, right? No, that'll never happen. But they've mm-hmm. never tried VR. They've never, they don't know how visceral the experience is when you're inside. And just imagine how that could change as the tech gets more comfortable, as the tech gets more fluid, um, mm-hmm. as the apps and, and worlds inside of virtual reality grow. Uh, I mean, the yeah, best example that I could give. All this. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the best example I could give is remember, like, I, and this isn't me, and I'm not making a judgment on it, but remember, like, people were like obsessed with Second Life for a while. Like, just, yeah, just yeah. like, you know just doing stuff and meeting people and maybe making money or like having a job in this virtual world. Like imagine yeah. that on steroids or combine that with like be actually being in that world and interacting mm-hmm. with people in a, in a way that you would interact with them in, in person um, because the, the VR tech or that VR fabric, it becomes, uh, you know, as realistic as it can get. So mm-hmm. to me, like everything that I saw there was totally believable. Cause like they were saying this is 30 years away or, you know, I think the movie takes place in 2040 something. And I was mm-hmm. like, I was like, I can see this happening even sooner than that. Right. Like I can see mm-hmm. virtual worlds uh, and virtual like economies and, and just everything building up inside this place. Um, you know, and, and I could be wrong. I, that's and that's totally fine. But I still think, like, just looking at the state of gaming today with stuff like Twitch, with live streaming, all that, like, there's going to be so much cool stuff happening inside virtual reality worlds uh, that it's just it's exciting for me. And I mean, that's going to come with its own challenges. And we've spoken a little bit about that. I mean, even just remember, remember, like the Rec Room stuff where people were yeah. talking about like uh, personal space. And I'm not trying to knock Rec Room, but I'm just remembering like the challenges yeah. that we discussed with their their no, development are, team. But like these are yeah, real that, challenges that, that we'll have to tackle yeah. and face as a society as like our early adopters. But to me, the overall like gist of it is exciting, and it's. It's going to change, I don't know, I feel it's like it's going to change things the way that the internet did, right? Like it's going to allow mm-hmm. people to interact in ways that they didn't really get to interact before. And it's going to allow people to interact with people around the world that they never really got to interact with before. Yeah, th- so That was something I mentioned in the the, the, the Space Junkies uh, episode that I that we put up earlier. Just the, uh-huh. the, in, the, the, in, the full body avatars and Space Junkies that I got to try out. Like... Like I was able to express myself in a way um, in that game that I I don't think I've I've been able to do in other games yet, and like it, it was just the way hand gestures worked and the way I they it looks like the software was trying to kind of anticipate what I was intending to do and and moving the player hands like based on where I was moving like it's hard to explain but but I legitimately felt like. Like I was getting, like we were able to express our, ourselves through body language to a degree that that is unprecedented in, in anything I had tried so far, from what I can remember. So like, like yeah, I'm totally with you there. Like when this stuff gets good enough, I mean, there's no 
there's nothing that can replace present the presence of being with someone in a space versus not. So like any, I mean, the ability that VR gives people to to be together despite being far apart in a way, like whether I'm jumping in a VR game with you know my brother that's in New York or this or that, like like being in a way in a physical space with someone is going to be you know a game changer once people get yeah. get a feel for what what's possible. I mean, and for anybody listening that that wants to kind of experience that, to me the most basic level of like it and and I always reference this when I'm talking to other people and trying to explain to them how powerful like VR can be in its most basic form, try big screen beta. Um, because there was that, remember, uh, you, myself yeah. and Damon were, were running a meeting in there at one point. Right. And, and yep. the, the meeting was fine. And it was cool to be able to do that virtually. But before you jumped in, I think, uh, you came in a couple minutes after Damon and I started, we were chilling there and he just threw on like <laughs> Jurassic Park. No, no I, like it sounds funny, but it's so crazy. Yeah. Cause like he threw on Jurassic Park and we were sitting there in like a movie theater environment or in, you know, a living room environment, watching the movie and talking together as if I was in like, you know, as if I was like talking to someone else while watching the movie in my own living room, right? But I'm talking to Damon and he's in Florida, I'm here, like, but to me, like, it's stuff like that where it's just going to be, imagine like families that live apart or like you not being with your spouse or something like, and you'll be able to throw on goggles and just like have a, a, you know what I mean? Like a virtual, like, time together. That's, that's going to be crazy. Yeah, I remember joining that big screen session that you were talking about. And like, from my perspective, it's kind of funny because, like you said, I joined kind of late. And when I joined, it was like you guys are like, it was like I was coming to a room where you guys are just hanging out, right? <laughs> yeah, like exactly. I, like literally, literally, it loaded up, and you guys were just kicked back, like chilling, and like, like it was obvious for me joining the session that, like, oh yeah, you guys have been hanging out for a while. Like I'm late to the party. It was, it's like you just yeah. walked in the front door on like movie night. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's just yeah, what it was. Yeah. <laughs> it's really funny, like because oh. that, that was a, totally what it felt like, right? Like, like oh crap, like I'm a little late. You guys are well settled in, and like you know, <laughs> like, yeah. It's, it's just, to it's to a me, funny concept. it's just yeah. And I think the way the way that we consume media nowadays too, it's just like, I mean, okay. So imagine like a big show like Game of Thrones comes back, right? Like. Uh, you'll be able, like you'll be able to do virtual watch parties with your friends no matter where they are in the world. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, that, yeah. That, I guess that's that's what I'm getting at because people consume content and now we can consume it together in different areas, right? Or like be yep. just with each other better in, in different areas. And I don't know. To me, that that's exciting because like that's really where I think VR is going to grow because and, and maybe and maybe Facebook and Oculus are going to be able to expand on this more just because they have. Uh, that whole platform of social network to to sure. lean back on, uh, and that they're going to build around. So, you, you know what I mean? Like to me, like yeah, I, yeah. I, either way, I'm just excited for where the tech is going to go, and obviously, yep. like I, I hope that translates over to the vibe. And you know, even just like something like big screen beta is like as simple as it is, and it's a free free program or app out there for anybody interested. Like to me, it's just awesome, right? Like I I get excited about little things like that. So you can't even imagine like when hearing about the the awesome games and experiences that are at the cutting edge that you were telling me about at GDC. Yep, yep. No, and I, I'm trying to remember if it was an Asimov quote or or which futurist said it, but I mean, really, like if there's something that you can now kind of imagine in your head as being something that's that would be a possibility in the future, like whatever whatever you can imagine is far too conservative, right? Yeah. Like whatever is actually going to be developed in 50 years from now, a hundred years from now is just going to be something like that we would think of as magical, something that's completely not possible. And yeah. like uh, all the things that you're talking about are totally possible. And you have to always think about those things without the restrictions. Like, like uh, some people would say, Oh, but you know, watching a movie in VR, like the resolution on the headset isn't high enough or you're wearing this goggles and all that. But like, like you were saying before, like, if we can imagine it, it's probably going to happen and then some, right? So like yep, there will yep. be a time where, where, you know, you're not going to feel that headset on your head and the resolution is going to be, you know, I like the, it's going to be, uh, as, as high as your eye can handle. And, and literally you're just going to be in other places through VR with people that, you know, you wouldn't have been able to be with otherwise. So like, yeah. that's where this stuff is eventually heading. I mean, this is, this is like an early form of, of, of TV or, or video chat or 
Like this is a new way for people to to communicate. And sure, it's primitive now in some respects, but man, like yeah, yeah to think of what this stuff is going to be like, and 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 we're all on the your you know on the pioneering floor of that. <laughs> yeah, and you know, new tech doesn't create itself, right? So we're all kind of a an important part of that of that process. Well, just being part of the yeah. conversation, and that's what this podcast is. That's what I hope everybody listening understands as well, right? Like, I mean, it's so new that. Even the developers that we've had on, the questions we've been able, been able to submit to them, like to me, yeah, in the in the macro, it, it's probably a very small, but like it, it still it still adds up, right? I feel like we can you can still make your voice heard uh, by being it, part of the community right now, and I, to me that that's amazing, right? Somebody can make a suggestion in a game, and that becomes like the the snap of the finger that like makes the game go viral, you know? Like it's little things like that that I think could really are really important for right now because even though we're two years in it's still um it's still like in such a developmental phase so yep no but yeah i feel like we're getting too fanboyish so let's let's take it back (laughs) let's take it back hey we can (laughs) it's okay to be vr fanboys fine fine you're right you're right i just don't want to get too carried away sometimes (laughs) yeah we're we're taking a moment to be platform agnostic like we were saying and just kind of you know just just ruminate about the possibilities of VR. Absolutely. All right. Well, let's let's wrap this episode up. Um, I just one thing that I wanted to mention briefly because I'm sure we'll we'll try to do a more in depth uh, review of yeah. of the Vive Pro uh, if and when we can get our hands on it. But while you were at GDC, it seemed like you used the Vive Pro ninety percent of the time, or maybe even hundred percent of the time. Uh, can you give us like your your thirty second or one minute like? review of it and, and i mean i'm not talking about price or anything i'm just talking about like what you liked yeah. about it and because it's i mean you came back just to preface it you came back saying like i think i want to get one um yeah so so I mean, tell, tell us like the stuff that really stuck out to you about that just really briefly i mean more comfortable for sure but just the clarity difference i mean you look at the specs and i know people are saying oh the specs are so impressive whatever i'll be honest when i saw the specs i thought oh it's going to be a little bit more clear but like, who cares? It's not perfect, right? So, like, whether I have a kind of blurry or a slightly less blurry version of the headset, until it's actually high enough resolution, like, why would I want to spend money to to get there, right? And I tried out, I, I got a chance to use the Vive Pro pretty much exclusively that week while I was at GDC. The only time that I really switched over is when I was using uh, a mixed reality headset, which is closer, or, like, a Rift, which which is like the current Vive, and it was night and day different. I mean, when I when I initially tried the Vive Pro, I thought, oh, cool, it's the Vive Pro. It, it looks good, but, like, I didn't realize, like, it wasn't initially just, wow, like, crazy, yeah. so, so beautiful. But then as soon as I had to switch back to a Rift or use, like, like when I got home, when I, when I had to use my, my regular Vive headset, I mean, it was a dramatic decrease in, in, in clarity. I mean, to the point where, like, I think, the thing that's cool about the Vive Pro is just it looks more like what you expect it to look like, right? Like it's still not perfect, but you can see, you can read text, you can see projectiles in the distance, you can see enemies in the mm-hmm. distance, yep. you can see, you can see more fidelity and textures and stuff in the in the world. Um, all that stuff that like, like I could swear that the the screen looks brighter, even though I don't think it really is. Like it's just, it's it's like. Like you, re- you just realized that someone that you had smudges on your glasses, and those smudges were mostly removed, and and everything just looks so much better. So, I mean, yeah, not going to give give away too much details as far as you know, like a, a formal review. But I, I mean, for those out there that are that have the expendable income, that you know, eight hundred dollars isn't a big deal. I mean, you will. <laughs> well, I'm see jealous different- if you do, but no, yes, yeah, like. No, like, and I'm one of those people too, right? So, like, I'm struggling. I, I feel like I'm put in this position because I was at GDC for a week. Like, yeah, if yeah. I had never, if I had never tried the Vive Pro, I probably once you I would taste not it, man. I, once you taste exactly. it, you can't go back. <laughs> yeah, so it's one of those things. It's like, is it eight hundred dollars better? Like, probably not. I don't know. But like, if you can swing the cash, it's definitely a much better headset. And like, no doubt, if you have a chance to try both, like. It's no contest. You want the Vive Pro, so, yep, yep. Um, so yeah. So, so I, I mean, yeah. I, I kind of don't want to go back, <laughs> and that's why I'm trying to figure out what I need to do if I want a Vive Pro. I don't know, but 
yeah oh, man like it's, we'll uh we'll, yeah. we'll we'll work towards uh we'll we'll see if we can figure out a way to get our hands on one at least at least to do a more formal review of the product so yeah um, yeah but yeah no, and that's what and, and and yeah not to again we're not trying to be fanboyish or anything like 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 that's why i'm not saying that this is a review because for anyone out there that really legitimately has to think about the price like that, it's a hot, tough it's, pill to it's swallow. It's a high price, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. and oh, I think you have not, to factor that in. I, like, even though yeah. I haven't tried it, I don't think that I can say like it's going to make my experience that much better that it's worth eight hundred dollars. Yeah, but no, I, no, I still no. want to try it better, to give but, my thoughts. Yeah, yeah, it's better, but like at the end of the day, like if you're trying to get a good VR experience, the Vive is a good VR experience. So, like the the standard Vive. So yep, especially yep. now with the price cut to five hundred dollars, like. I, I personally like I didn't get a chance to talk to HTC or anybody there about what their what the deal is with the price or anything like that. But I legitimately think that they I, I would have to just assume that they priced it that way because they're not necessarily trying to get everybody to buy it. I mean, at the end of the day, like we know the Steam 2.0 is going to be you know coming out with new base stations and new types of controllers and all this stuff. Like, I mean, maybe this is a way to 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 make sure that your average run of the mill consumer doesn't purchase it by putting it at a high price because yeah. you know because because really this is a stopgap they're releasing it because they can and really maybe they want to they do want to encourage consumers to kind of wait for a future release of a more consumer level version that's going to yep. vive 2 baby come on we're still waiting exactly so so yeah so so that's that's what I have to say about about that right now. But okay. but yeah, if if you were wondering how it performs, it it yeah the the specs don't tell the full story. Like it, again, just like VR in general, it's the proof is in the pudding. When you try it, you realize how much better it is, especially when you have to go back. So. Gotcha. Cool, cool. Well, thank you for sharing that, and thank you for sharing your story at GDC. So. Um, Let's go ahead and, and wrap this episode up here. I, was there anything else you needed uh, or that, that we had to go through? I think we covered everything. No, I think I think we did a good job there. So Cool. All right, guys. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, like we said at the beginning, uh, our new schedule is going to be on Tuesdays, and uh, we will find a way to get you an episode. I know Ronnie made some awesome contacts and just connected with so many fantastic people out at GDC, so he's lining up some interviews for us. Uh, so we are excited to share those with you if or when, whenever we get those scheduled and out. Uh, but in the meantime, hit us up on Twitter, shoot us an email, contact at everythingvive.com, and uh, we will uh, we'll be in touch. We'll see you in a week. 